good morning world it's just before seven o'clock on saturday the 7th of may 2022 and i'm just about to set off for the long haul trip to barrow so first leg of the trip is uh, to drive to nottingham and yeah part of me is looking forward to this part of me is not the the reasons why I'm driving to Nottingham will be explained later, so hopefully we can do this. So let's get on the road. Right. 22 minutes past eight and I've literally just got into Nottingham so I've got 20 minutes to get down to the station which is it says to make sure the car's locked but walk across here the station is just down there so yeah 20 past eight the train goes at train is due to go at 8.45 I've just checked it's running uh, 10 minutes late which could make the uh, connection interesting because I've only got a 10 minute connection at uh, Manchester so uh, yeah like I say this could get interesting so let's see how we go Good start, train's nine minutes late, and this is all the people that are waiting for it. So, yeah.
Yes, sure. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get out without you. <laughs> anyway. Right. Hey. Thanks for, thanks for your help anyway. Yes, hope so. Yeah. <laughs> Oh dear. Right. Just arrived into Manchester Piccadilly 23 minutes late. So the plans have changed. I've now got to get the 11, whatever it is. It says, let me just check my sheet. Now I've got to get the 11.47 and change at Preston and Lancaster to get in. I'll get in an hour later than planned, but hey, we're still going. So, so now I've got an hour stuck here at Manchester Piccadilly, or three quarter of an hour stuck at Piccadilly. But we're making progress. All good fun. <laughs> How did you get that far? <laughs> How did you get that far? Must have been good for his dad's time. Yeah, I think he had some technical issues. General passengers, please stand back. I don't know, all passengers off the train safely. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
approaching Lancaster. When leaving us here, make sure you have all your luggage and belongings with you. And please mind the step down to the platform. one train straight onto another. because I'm on a later ticket. <laughs> you just changed your rugs. 
<laughs> yeah. The cupboard's up, aren't they? They let us straight through the back. They didn't even... Yeah, they're, they're, they're stopping them out. They've had the bloody BTP on there. Oh, of course, a bit, a bit thin in here. Cheers. It's also available by digital download by the website. Can I remind you, as always, there's no smoke in my bag. Hey, you're not going to be my bag. That includes the fans all. Here are today's teams. We'll start with the visitors. Number one is Ian Roberts, four Jack Salaby, five John Guthrie, six Ron Oswald, seven Sam Hoskins, eleven Mitch Pinnock, fourteen Ali Koike, seventeen Sean Williams, twenty-one Josh Eckler, twenty-three Joseph Mills, twenty-four is Louis Appare. Substitutes for the visitors, twenty-six John Maxted, two Michael Hyman, twelve Scott Pollock, eighteen John Zimba. 19 interesting value, 32 down the walls, 35. You can, I can, you can. <laughs> For the Bluebirds, number one is Paul Farmer, two Mark Brown, five Mark Max, 11 Josh Hay, 12 Josh Gordon, 15 is Robbie Dots, 18 Joey Grayson, Northampton three. The only problem being, Bristol Rider has put seven past uh, Scunthorpe, so they've picked us to the final spot by goal goal difference. Such is life. So walking back to the station now to get the 519 train back. Let's just hope it's a better journey back than it was coming up. And uh, let's just say I'm slightly gutted. So blur. That line, that yeah, well, he did. He wanted. He didn't want to see it, basically. on time. Shouldn't be. Shouldn't be. It's only a only ten past. Yes, Graham. 
Ten years less. Oh look. Oh what excuse you'll give this time. Yeah, that is the five nineteen. aboard this northern service to Lancaster. We will be calling at Roost, Dalton in Furness, Officer, Carkin Cartmill, Range of the Sun, Onside, Silverdale, Lancaster. Right. Back into Lancaster. Any customers just arrived at platform number five, traffic to Preston Stations to Manchester. Please keep your way around. Platform number four. Next turn at platform four will be for Manchester Airport. Any customers for Wigan, Warrington, Crew, Milton Keynes Central, and London Eastern, please also make your way to platform four and await further announcement. Train now standing at platform five, the 1835 Northern Service to Now on the eighteen twenty nine back.
is a TransPennine Express service to Manchester Airport. This service will be calling at Preston, Manchester Oxford Road, Manchester Piccadilly and Manchester Airport. change and do a bailout of Manchester Oxford Road. Hopefully I can get something to eat. I think I've got 15, 20 minutes for my train back to Nottingham. So let's see how we go. train 1938 which is in five minutes so there we go platform five for the 1938 service to the calling at Deansgate, Trafford Park, Humphrey Park, we are sorry to announce that the 1942 Northern service to Hazel Grove is being delayed due to train crew being delayed by service disruption. This service is between Salford Crescent and Deansgate. Sheffield. So, <laughs> a couple more stops, back to Nottingham, it's the drive back to Peterborough. 
yeah, I've just had a fun bit of fun trip from Manchester, but I'll explain later. and do my final report. Oh dear, what a day. See you in a bit. Good evening. It is just past 11 o'clock on Saturday the 7th of May 2022. And I've just got home from today's trip to Barrow which was, as you've probably seen in this blog, rather eventful. It's been a bloody long day. You know, I left home at seven o'clock this morning and I've just got home. So that's what, God knows how many hours, I can't even count, 16 hours. Anyway, like I say, left home seven o'clock this morning. Let's drive down to Nottingham to get the train. Fine, journey down. Stopped off at McDonald's for my usual bacon roll breakfast. Getting to Nottingham and uh, check the phone, see how the train's doing. It's running uh, eight minutes late, which wasn't good because uh, I only had a 10 minute connection at Manchester Piccadilly onto the 10, 10.47. So I thought, well, yeah, that's going to be tight. So text Graham say, yeah, I'm on my way but my train's running late. He went, yeah, mine's running late as well, but you know, hopefully we'll see each other at Manchester. So, whatever. Carries on, pulls into Sheffield, 13 minutes late. We then held up at Sheffield because some twat decided to hold the train up because his mates are in the, getting beer. So that didn't help. We then pulled into Stockport, 15 minutes late. And this was at 10.47. That was the time my train was due out of Manchester, Piccadilly. So I've got Graham saying, oh, we're on the train. <laughs> yeah, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, we're on the train, we should be. I went, I'm at Stockport. So I had to go find the train guard and bless her socks. You know, no fault against her, lovely girl. She t took me a piece of paper, signed it, says, yeah, uh, play endorsed it, says, yeah, please let this chap travel on. And she even took the time to look up train times for me, which really helped. So, you know, kudos to her from EMR for that. Which I think off the top of my head involved me waiting. Because I got into Manchester Piccadilly at 10 past 11. I had to get the 11.47 from Piccadilly to Preston. Change to Preston onto the 12.41 and then get to Lancaster to get the 13.01 to Barrow, which got me in at uh, 2 minutes past 2. Yeah. So, that all got fine. Get to, Bar get to Barrow train station. Graham walks back to meet us. we walking down towards the ground, which is literally out the front of the station, turn left a little bit and just turn right onto the main road and just walk straight up the main road. As we're walking up the main road, there's only a couple of fans being escorted in there all kicking off and fighters are kicking off behind us, which is not what we needed. Uh, we did go slightly wrong. We walked to the wrong end of the ground. But, you know, we found it and walked back to the end and got in and stood in with a load of chavs. We obviously in on, on, in on a freebie because... That's the, that was the other gripe of the day, is that they only give us 400 tickets and we could have filled that away end twice over. And then, you know, Cobblers fans are told, well, you, you know, 
400 tickets that went on sale after after one game but from what i read on the forums there was people walking around before the game had even kicked off in the saying oh i've got, I've got our barrow tickets mate well saying to their mate in the back of the west stand yeah oh, don't worry i've got our barrow tickets i've got them here so how can they go on sale before to certain people but you know grumble over so a load of couple of fans bought tickets for the home end which we did we were still in the home end we went still did go behind the goal originally which is where the photo at the start and the end comes from and then we got surrounded by the local chaps because barrow cottoned on to the fact that northampton were buying their home tickets to stand in the home end so they decided to stop us and they tried to hand them out to all the schools and all the little chaps and wherever just to stop us so I say, me and Graham stood there with all the chaps and we said, oh, stop this for a lot. We're going to stand around the side. Walk around the side. And then stood, stood with someone from our um, It's All Cobbles To Me podcast. So we stood there, you know, and blah, blah, blah. Minute silence before the game. Game kicks off. Bang. Cobbles go 1-0 up. I think, yeah, okay. It's fine. Carry on. 10 minutes later, bang, we go 2-0 up. Thinking, no, this is all going to go wrong. It's all going to go wrong. It's got to go wrong. And then we go 3 0 up with another one from Moskins. We're thinking, no, this is this is too good a day because on the way up, me and Graham are having a discussion over over Twitter on text on Twitter saying that typically it can be typical cobblers, we're going to screw it up. Either we're going to be going up and Barrow are going to score. And, throw the coin in the fountain or the spanner in the works or Bristol were going to go absolutely ape shit and hit everyone for six or seven which they did didn't they so you know we have a bit of a yeah we're three nil up flying Barrow get a corner our goalkeeper gets shoved over into the back of the net ref said he didn't see it bang three one we're thinking oh god what's the bloody Bristol Rovers score and they were winning. T- they were winning two 0 at the time. So we're thinking, yeah, we've got this. We're safe. Comes to half time. Yeah, more discussions. Blah 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 blah. And then we come to second half, where the coppers just didn't turn up. They just didn't seem bothered at all. Barrow brought for the fight. We weren't. We were just too busy. Hoof ball. Hoof ball. Hoof ball. Oh, I can't be bothered. You know, hoof ball. Let's just hoof it upfield and hope. Meanwhile, meanwhile, he says, down in Bristol, Bristol City, Bristol Rovers starts scoring for fun against a side from Scunthorpe, which is mainly made of kids. So we're thinking, yeah, they've gone 3 0 up, 4 0 up, 5 0 up, 6 0 up. We're thinking, we can't blow this, surely, because we don't need this. You know, this, this is going to be just so that they're going to blow it. And we got to about five minutes before the end, and then a massive great cheer went up from all the Barrow fans, and we looked at it and went, Bristol Rovers have scored, didn't they? And they had 7-0. And then to cop it all off, our, decided, our ge- Northampton goalkeeper, Roberts, Liam Roberts, decides to do a bloody handy-pandy outside the bloody area and get himself sent off. Straight red. So he all missed the playoffs. Well, no great loss anyway, because apparently him and uh, our other centre-back, Walsfall, were off to West Brom. So, no great loss. I don't really care anymore. So, we we lose 3 Well, we win 3-1, but we uh, <laughs> fail on the automatics on one goal, which is just typical for us. Typical cobblers. So... We're walking back to the station, debating it all, and thinking, oh, God, here we go. And then we get confirmation through that the playoff, the first playoff semi-final will be a week today, which is the 14th, 14th or the 15th, whatever it is, 14th, I think, um, at 7.45, away at Mansfield. We're thinking... 
Oh God, here we go again. It'll be, you know, it'll be just our luck that we'll get Phil Crossley to referee it. Like the bloody clown he was in 2003 or 2004, whenever it was. Yeah, where Cobbers, Cobbers went, in, went into the, the uh, second leg, 2 0 down. Went 3 0 up on the night, we were winning 3 2. And then we had our striker clean through on goal, and he got absolutely cleared out by one of the, Man, the Mansfield, Mansfield players. The ref didn't even give a card. He just blew proof out for Mansfield. Mansfield went straight through the end and scored, equalised. And then they beat us on penalties. So we never beat Mansfield, so that's us screwed. So we handed back to the train station. Got on the 17-19 train from Barrow back to Lancaster. And they said, yeah, basically, if you're going back through Manchester, get onto platform four because there's a train coming in, which is what I did. So I had to come back through Man back to Manchester. So got off at Manchester Oxford Road, walked down to the little, there's a big, well, a little Sainsbury's there. So I went to get a drink and something to eat just to keep me going and whatever. Got walked back to Oxford Road Station, got on my train back to Nottingham, fine, till we got into bloody Manchester Piccadilly. Then I got, I'm in, I'm in a bay of four on my own. There's a colour, there's a coloured lad sat opposite me. He's fine. And then this Arabic woman comes in because, your bag, your bag. On, on the table. Went, yes, my bag. She, goes, I move it. I move it. She just picks it up and literally throws it in the rack above it. Above us. Then she gets out and spreads all her shit all over the bloody table, all her food and everything. And then she barges the bags into my seat with me, me, with me crunched up against the bloody window and then she starts having a bloody screaming fit down the phone in Arabic to her friends and swearing and cursing at everybody when when she gets cut off because the train was going through the tunnels. It's all your bloody it's all your fault. Jabbing away and it's in bloody Arabic or whatever it was. Three times two women told her to, to quieten down because she was yelling the whole carriage could hear. The guard came through and told her to quieten down because he could hear her. And he was two car. He was two coaches behind us, and she was just swearing and cursing in Arabic, and yelling at the top of her voice. But she finally got off a foot to Sheffield, thank God. So then, uh, yeah, train turned around at Sheffield. Got into Nottingham half past nine, and I walked round the side. You know, got in the car and drove home. It took me. Hour, about an hour and a half to drive home, so it's 11 o'clock or whatever time it is now, and I'm absolutely bloody shattered. Will there be another blog? I don't know, to be honest. I'm just losing track, losing all heart with the cobblers now. I've supported them for a good 35 40 years, but. Half of them just don't, don't seem bothered anymore. You know, we could have been automatics and promoted, but you know, we play a brilliant first half and then we switch off. And we've done that two or three weeks. The last couple of games I've been to, we played an absolutely brilliant first half and then we switch off at half time. So, yeah, but anyway, there is a rumour that I'm going down to work in permanent weekends at work, so that's not going to help. So, uh, anyway. I'm going to sign off, I'm going to go to bed, and I'm going to go to sleep. Bye bye.